So thanks again for joining us. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. My name is Matt, and I am here with Eugene Lee. Um, Eugene, you just wrapped up a great message, uh, and we've been talking, we're in this series on subscribe, and we've been talking about um, spiritual practices mm -hmm. and how they can affect the physical realm in different ways. So, um, you know, I I'm curious, uh, for some of us, we don't have the luxury of necessarily unsubscribing from our work. Um, we, you know, sometimes th these things can affect the professional realm. And so if we can't do that, um, if we can't just quit, but we're still feeling overwhelmed, yeah. what would you say, how, do, how can we better uh, correct that? Yeah, you know, that's a great, great question because I think a lot of people feel that pressure um, and that expectation to, to work and to get certain things done. You know, I'll say a couple things about that, Matt. First of all, I think work really is never done. It's just do, right? And so kind of like uh, writing a sermon or a message, like you know this, like it's never done. You're never fully done with it. You just have to deliver it. You have to give it, right? And so I think we've got to recognize the difference between when we're done and when it's just time to stop and take a break and withdraw. Uh, so I think there's that. And then I think, you know, truly there may be situations where, um, you know, work really just needs to be delivered or finished or completed. I'd say, you know, it's about finding creative ways to find Sabbath moments or mm. moments where you can take, you know, a moment or pause. Um, in fact, that's something that we did in the, in the service this past weekend. Um, right in the middle of the service, just pause for a moment and reflect and be still and stop what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we have the gift of a full 24-hour period uh, to do that. And sometimes it's just two or three minutes. Uh, but I think that's where we just have to be open-minded and not feel legalistic that, oh, I didn't spend a full day, you know? I mean, sometimes, some seasons, we just can't. Yeah, that's a good word, yeah. And so let's look at this from a different angle, different mm -hmm. perspective. Suppose you're not overwhelmed right now. Um, you know, your life is balanced enough, but you're still unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe expand on how a spiritual practice might help that? Yeah, you know, and that, that probably speaks to a lot of people during COVID. Um, and I, again, this is where I'd say, um, you know, use imagination and creativity and find new ways of experiencing joy and delight. Um, and so it can be simple things like um, read a novel. Um, uh, you know, for Valentine's Day, my wife got me a list, a book with 100 hikes in the Bay Area, right? Now, uh, I love hiking, but like now I'm interested. I'm looking forward to discovering new places to hike, mm. right? Uh, to go on this journey of discovery or adventure. Um, pick up a new hobby, uh, right? Um, but whatever you do, like get off your phone or get off your computer or don't just, you know, for some people, maybe watching a good movie, but I'd say don't binge watch, you know, eight or nine hours because, <laughs> you know, that ne doesn't necessarily, you know, refill the heart and the soul. So yeah. be creative and find something that leads to joy and delight. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that. Um, there, uh, I read something recently regarding uh, people's uh, desire to rewatch episodes of sitcoms that they've already seen, whether it's The Office or Parks and Recreation or one of these things. And it's almost the reason I feel that sometimes people binge watch them is because they're, it's predictable. They know where it's mm -hmm. going. Yeah. And uh, in seasons of unpredictability or unfulfillment, um, we cling to the things that we know are going to... Um, meet the expectation that we have. And so just switching that up can be so helpful, yeah. I think. So that's, that's good as well. Suppose, okay, suppose you're in a slightly different place. Um, you're already happy. Your workload is good enough. Um, you're feeling fulfilled. Uh, your time, generally, you can do what you want when you want. Yeah. Why should you Sabbath? Why should you have a spiritual practice? Well, the first thing I'd say is just be grateful that that's where you are and who you are. That's not always the case. Um, you know, stuff happens. Uh, demands can come out of nowhere. Responsibility, whether it's work or personal life, relationships, family. Um, and so if you're in a season right now where you're not feeling the overwhelm, I would say be grateful that you're not. Mm. Yet uh, maintain a discipline and a rhythm of Sabbath so that you have that, that muscle memory, that practice, that habit that will continue to lead you and guide you when you are in a season, when you don't have the luxury of, you know, more leisure time or, or less stress at work or, or at home. Um, and, and so I think these practices, these rhythms are really meant to carry us through all the seasons of life, you know, not just when it's easy and not just when it's hard, but through both. Mm. And so I think that's why it's important. Um, you know, the way of Jesus is about uh, experiencing all the contours of life. 
And so that's why I'd encourage, even if you aren't in a season of overwhelm, to continue to maintain a practice of, of rest, of worship, of delight, of rejuvenation. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, so last question. For you, Eugene Lee, what does it look like to take a Sabbath? How do you practice that in your own life? Yeah. Um, so um, for me, usually if, you know, the day of the week for my Sabbath, there's one day of the week, Matt, where I don't have an alarm and it's my Sabbath day. So I usually have an alarm set for six days of the week. Uh, but one day of the week, I'll just get up when my body says it's time to get up. And so sometimes it's early and sometimes it's not so early. But when I get up, I hopefully I'm feeling rested. Um, an ideal Sabbath for me is uh, a bike ride outside. So being outside in nature, uh, some exercise. A two-hour bike ride is, is about normal. But if I could squeeze in a three- or four-hour bike ride, wow. that would be amazing. <laughs> Um, and then for me, the great thing about exercising and being outside is it uh, creates an appetite. So I get really hungry. And so when I come home, I really look forward to cooking like a favorite meal, enjoying a glass of wine, uh, you know, having, um, you know, this, you know, with my family, with, with Esther, my wife. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, it's not elaborate, but those are some of the key components. Sometimes it's taking a nap in the middle of the day. Um, sometimes it's just reading something that I don't feel like is productive, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a novel or some fiction. Um, other times it's just, um, you know, picking up a new hobby, uh, learning how to build something or fix something. Uh, but anything really that uh, helps me to not think about work and being productive and just slowing down and yeah. being unhurried and unanxious. Anything that puts me in that zone um, really is a gift on the Sabbath. That's great. That's great. That's great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next week as we unpack more spiritual practices. And if you haven't yet, by all means, please tune into our new series, Unsubscribe.